And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the Midnight Ride. My name is David Carrico, and I am honored and excited once again to welcome each and every one of you into the Puritan Barn for the Midnight Ride with myself and John Pounders. Tonight, the mark of the beast and the number of a man, an amazing ride and a deep dive into that rabbit hole of the mark of the beast and AI technology. And tonight, I want to give a shout out to Brother Cecil Cobb down there in Evansville, Indiana, because he is sitting there watching the Midnight Ride with a hat on that's just like mine. So, blessings to you, Brother Cecil. So, with that, get ready, because it all begins right now, because we are now live, live, live. What's up, guys? It's so good to be back here in the Puritan Barn once again, Mm -hmm. bringing you guys something that we believe is super important and as always i'd love to know where you guys are from in the chat let us know um and and give us a shout out man we'd love to hear this and we're so thankful for all of you that have joined us uh it's been really an awesome week busy week we've got passover coming up uh which is going to be really cool for those of you that don't do passover it's an awesome uh biblical holiday that just there's so much to it so much prophetic revelation Mm. and different things associated with it that it is one of my favorite holidays and of course it's one of the seven biblical holidays that we should be celebrating rather than some of the holidays we've been handed down so uh, tonight before we get started i want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors um this includes joshua watts leather wattsleather.com uh some of the best custom leather pieces whether you're talking about book covers bracelets necklaces um gun holsters whatever this guy he can do it amazing job he's done several book covers for me if you look on his website you'll see why you will want those things amazing stuff so check that out also sugar and spice soap.com this company produces all natural soap products so you no longer have to worry about rubbing dangerous chemicals or unclean things on your body and uh, so we're thankful to have that soap is a huge part of um you know in in fitness and wellness and all that soap can play a major role in damaging you if you're not careful and so we want to make sure that it doesn't damage us that it actually helps us and cleans us properly so we want to give a shout out to them also fojc radio this is david and donna fojc and they have done uh there's ministry of work of over 40 years compiled on one website where you can check out all their content books etc that they have on there make sure you check that out and also as always nystv.org nystv.org let me say that again this is the website where we have exclusive content that you cannot find anywhere else we have our book of enoch video commentary for those of you that have been watching for the last month you've seen several book of enoch episodes that we've done here for everybody to see because we want to get people to interested and we want to get people knowing about the book of Enoch and how uh, awesome it is really and if you're really interested in it anybody can go read it for themselves for free online but we're actually doing a commentary step by step verse by verse and that's included in our website as well as documentaries that you guys have not seen on youtube or any other place and uh, for those of you that do that you get a coupon code writer that gets you $8.99 $8.99 off your first month. So please go check it out. And that's all the sponsorship stuff that I have. Uh, one thing we do want to announce is we're doing a meet and greet in Nashville. What was the date on that, David? The 11th. The 11th of April. April at 6 p.m. And we're going to get all the details and stuff to you guys later. Make sure the best thing for you guys to find out all these details, if you're not a part of our mailing list, is social media. Uh, also here on YouTube, we're going to be discussing some of these things. But 
you can actually there's going to be a link where you can register so you can know where you're going so um with that being said david that's all i have what else do you have well i'm really excited <laughs> if i get any more excited i'm gonna be dangerous but <laughs> this topic tonight is uh, to be able to look into this and share the information with our midnight ride audience it's exciting what a timely topic and it, it is just exciting to be able to bring this before our midnight ride listeners and tomorrow night on FOJC Radio Underground Church, we're going to live stream at 8 p.m. A series we're beginning there is going to be entitled Ancient Planets at War. And I'm just excited about that. And I'm going to be doing that with Tracy Benet. And upcoming on the Midnight Ride, we're going to be unpacking a series on the seven seraphim of the apocalypse. We're going to be taking a deep dive into Enoch, the 69th chapter. It is just going to be amazing, and we just can't wait to share that with you all. So there's a lot going on. I tell you what, there's a lot going on, and uh, we are just thankful that we are in this fight with you and in this walk with you to uh, just see the great things the Lord's revealing in these last days. It's just absolutely amazing. It's so true. And so tonight, um, before we get started, um, I would like to say, that this subject is of great importance. And although it speaks of frightening events, uh, future events, and some events that are going on right now, um, it's important to discuss and to pass these stories on to other people um, because we're coming upon a time right now where this information will be hard to come by because of the suppression that will take place over this subject especially and we're from everything that i can gather we're coming to an end of an age we're coming to the end of the human as we know it and so we're going to discuss that look into this and we're going to start by reading a scripture and david i have a slide here do you mind reading this for me i don't it's mind at all and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. So there have been um, many interpretations and commentaries of this ancient text about the mark of the beast it's such a disturbing text uh, disturbing to the point to where it, it is almost makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up um, and it's so bistur disturbing to me because you only have two options in this you either receive the mark of the beast on your head or it's off with your head, right? You either get it on your hand or, or, or in your head. And if you don't do this, you will be beheaded, right, according to these scriptures. Uh, and if that wasn't scary enough, if you decide to get the mark of the beast, then you will never have the opportunity to be redeemed, and your soul and body will be forever damned to hell, which is obviously one of the scariest things that a human can imagine. And so, of course, the question with all of this that I have is, what does this mean? Uh, I think it's worth another look. I don't think that we need to be left unaware of what this could possibly mean. What are the implications of this? Because I think personally that within the next generation, whether it's this generation, the next generation, we're coming to the end of this age. Everything's pointing to this. Um, the technology is there, and so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, that. And so with the passing of time, I believe we have uh, insight that may give us the ability to calculate the number of the beast and to uncover a mystery. If not to calculate the name of the beast exactly, we definitely are going to uncover a mystery tonight. And um, in Revelation 13, we have this that we read this first passage from, we have this frightening image, uh, first of a beast 
that comes out of the sea. It has seven heads, ten horns, ten crowns, and the names of blasphemy written on, on its heads. And um, it takes under subjection the entire world through the power that's given to it by Satan. So a very frightening beast, something that's something to behold. When John was beholding this beast, it troubled him greatly. And it says that the beast will be able to make war with the saints and will be able to overcome them. And then those who are left with all of this will face another beast. And this time, this beast comes out of the earth. So you have two beasts in Revelation 13. And uh, I'm not the first person to point this out. A lot of people forget that this is the case. And I don't know how many times I have looked at it and forgot about this beast. But you have this beast that comes out of the earth. And he's described as having horns like a lamb. But he speaks as though he's a dragon. And he utilizes and uplifts all the power of the beast that was before him. And it says that he causes the entire world to worship the image of the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders in the sight of men. He causes fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. Uh, and he causes the entire world to make this image of this beast. So this is given the backdrop to Revelation 13. Just to kind of recap, we have this beast system that comes. It subjugates the entire world. And then a new beast rises up out of the out of the earth who exercises all the power, causes people to worship the beast, and also institutes the mark of the beast. So in slide two here, we have Revelation thirteen, eighteen. David, can you read that for me? Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six so we see here that six 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 is the number of the man and i think it's important to remember that because you can calculate this number six 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 in so many different ways it tells it's multifaceted and tells a number of stories and we're going to talk about some of those stories that it tells along with this and Many things in the Bible have very literal interpretations, and some of them have literal interpretations as well as interpretations that require a little bit more deep study. This is why myself and David spend so many hours, so much time digging through the Word of God, and because there's so many stories to tell, you can read the same passage many times and when you come to it again, you can see something that you may have never seen before, something that makes sense to you now based on the wisdom that you've acquired from reading the Word and other things. And so um, one of the stories that we're going to talk about here is the procession of time that it tells about 666. Uh, there's a video that a friend of ours, uh, Timothy Alberino, did where he talks about the procession of time, how that six, calculating the number six times six times six gives you a certain number and it calculates a, an age. So we're going to watch the first few minutes of this video because I think what he says here is, is very valid. I think that obviously there's more to it, but I want to, we'll check out this video and then we'll come back and discuss here in just a second. This puts us right at the end of the age when we know the beast is coming, according to the calculation of the number of the beast. Six times six times six. So this whole thing of 666 is the, no, it's six times six times six. See, it's the precessional number of an age, the age of Pisces. We know when the beast will arise at the age of Pisces. So are we at the end of the age? Yes, we are. We're at the beginning of the end of the age. And in, in, in the end of these ages is always a, a a very chaotic, disruptive, transitional period. And we're already beginning to get into the rumblings of this disruption. But we don't understand because we forgot how to use the celestial timepiece. My name is Timothy Albrino, and you are watching End Times Productions. What I try to do is, 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 to, is to tell that story from beginning to end. Again, that story that 
that began to that began to ruminate in my heart back in the Amazon and came out of me when I was writing this book. And I believe that it was, it's a very timely book because we are in fact living at the beginning of the end of the age. And that doesn't mean that the end of the age is tomorrow. In fact, I believe we can calculate the end of the age. And in fact, by calculating the end of the age, I mean we can calculate the number of the beast which we're told to do in Revelation, the number of the beast is not 666 or 666. The number of the beast is the number of a man, six. Why is the number of a man six? Because God created man on the sixth day. The number of the man is six. So it's not 666 or 666. Well, it is 666, but it's not 666 as a whole number. It's six, six, six. And so when you have three numbers like that, six, six, and six, and you're told to calculate those numbers, what do you do? And it's universal, by the way. Mathematics, universal across the globe. When you have three numbers like that and you calculate them, you always multiply them. Six times six times six, 216, which is a derivative of 2,160, which is the exact number of years that it takes to complete one age, one processional age, which is how the ancients measured the ages. Christ, his birth corresponded with the age of Pisces. Again, inaugurating the age of Pisces. That's why Jesus was represented by a fish, because the fish is the symbol of Pisces. And the early Christians knew that the age of Pisces had been inaugurated with the, son, with the birth of the Son of God, with the birth of the Messiah. And so Pisces, the, the fish, became the symbol of Christ in the early church. It was the age of Christ, the age of Pisces. And Jesus said at the end of the age, what age was he referring to? This one. This age, the one in which he was born. At the end of this age, these things would happen. And then in Revelation, calculate the number of the beast, 666, six, six. six times six times six, 216. Again, in the ancient world, you could take that zero off and it still represents the same number, 2,160. It's the duration of a processional age. So, so literally the beast, when is the beast going to arise? At the end of the age of Pisces. When is the end of the age of Pisces? 2,160 years from the inauguration of the age of Pisces, from the birth of Christ, who was born sometime around 4 BC. So you calculate from the birth of Christ 2,160 years, we're in the year 2022. So you add on the, the 4 BC, because Jesus wasn't born on 1 AD, he was born probably around 4 to 5 BC, so that puts us around really 2,000, 26 or thereabouts. So 2026, 25 years since the birth of Christ and an age has 2,160 years. We're getting pretty close, but it's not tomorrow, right? People get mad at me for saying that, but it's not tomorrow. It's at the end of the age of Pisces, the transition into the age of Aquarius. So, and what's really fascinating is that you have, you have Yuval Noah Harari out there, the famous proponent of transhumanism who's like, the, who's like the spokesperson for the global elite as it pertains to transhumanism. And, and Harari is out there saying that we are the last generation of homo sapiens. In, he says, 100 to 200 years from now, the earth will be populated by post-human species. Is it coincidental that Harari's projections correspond to the end of the age? And Armageddon and... So we're going to stop it there. If you guys want to go watch the rest of that video, feel free to do so. Now, he said a lot of stuff in there about the procession of time. And um, the interesting thing about it is there's so much to do with the procession of time and these numbers more than... Uh, he's discussed in this part of the video, and I don't know that he discusses some of the things we're going to talk about tonight, but I, we're going to talk about them because it's pretty interesting. Um, David, do you have anything that you would like to say about the procession of time and these numbers?
Well, what Timmy has to say there could bear merit. That word in the Greek in Revelation 13, count the number of the beast, it means to calculate. So that could be six plus six plus six or six times six times six. So it very well could mean that. So if we see some dots connect from that multiplication, it could be worth looking at. Yeah, and, you know, we see the procession of time in other scriptures in the Bible as well. One of the most obvious, I think, is in Ezekiel. You have uh, the story of Ezekiel's will, and I, uh, wheel, W-H-E-E-L, and it, and it also talks about these creatures that are inside these wheels, and this is a heavenly vision that's been given to Ezekiel, and in, in chapter 1 and chapter 10, he sees the same creatures, and he talks about these creatures. Um, interestingly, the, the, these creatures have to do majorly with the procession of time. Now, the heads of these creatures, as been mentioned in Ezekiel, and David, if you have your scripture handy, um, can you read Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 5, I believe, through 8? Uh, that way we can get a description straight from Ezekiel of these beings. And also I might say that talking about the procession of the universe, it's referring to the movement that we would perceive in what we would call the zodiac. Yes. Now this can be measured and it would not be affected by a argument of biblical cosmology versus heliocentric spinning globe it's something we can observe yes. and measure and calculate and people have done this for a long long time ezekiel chapter 1 beginning in verse 5 also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man and everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings and their feet were straight and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on the four sides. And, on the, and they four had their faces and their wings. So when you, when you look at that, you have this creature described as having the face, face of a, the, a body of the man, a, a face of a man, a face of a lion, a face of an eagle, and a face of a cherub. Now, David mentioned the um, Zodiac. Now, the Zodiac is the version of the Maseroth, which is the Hebrew celestial calendar that we have. And the symbols are the same. The animals are the same. Names are a little bit different. But what we're going to look at here is the Maseroth. Now, if you notice the cherub, the four cardinal points of this Maseroth that are here on this left picture are the faces of the cherub. You have the Taurus, which is the bull, the ox. You have the Leo, which is the lion. And you have the eagle. And then you have also Aquarius, right, which is the human representation of this being. Now, these cherubs seem to represent the procession of time. Now, in both visions, in Ezekiel 1 and in Ezekiel 10, he mentions this creature with the faces in clockwise order, the same exact order in Ezekiel 1 and in Ezekiel 10. Ezekiel 10 seems to be, he's seeing the same exact thing, and it seems that these crafts that they're in are representative of interesting, uh, maybe constellations, because they have all of these eyes that have, uh, and a lot of times eyes represent stars in the Bible. Uh, we've talked about that before. But this is an interesting example of procession of the age being mixed in with the scriptures because this this is how stories were told this is a lot of this has to do with stories and it's it's just super interesting to me david when i see this that the bible is encoded not only with literal things but it's encoded with time pieces it's encoded with things in here that no regular copy of human writing could really grasp or be able to, to hold all of the things that we have here um, going on. So another thing about 666, if we're calculating the numbers, is it's the natural summation 
of the numbers 1 through 36. So what that means is if you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and go all the way to 36, when you add all those numbers together, that equals 666. And the ancient calendars were actually divided into 36 um, what what they called uh, 30 there's 36 parts and they call them decans right and so they had 36 parts within these calendars every 10 days uh, then this would be over a 10 day span they would count 360 days and then they added five days to the calendar but in those 360 days every 10 days a new constellation would be seen coming up before the sun uh, it's, and when I say new, a different constellation each time because the in the previous days, the previous 10 days, that constellation wouldn't be seen because of the sun. So another another interesting thing with that, and we'll get back to that number in just a second. Um, and if you look at this here, this slide here, I think I just showed it to you guys. This shows a Deccan being uh, advertised on here. This one actually is a magical one that has the tarot cards and stuff and things like that. But... These uh, calendars, these old calendars, all had these decans, and the Egyptians especially had these as well. Um, so one other thing, too, that I, we're, we're going to do a little bit more calculating here. So the number 336, the simple ge ge uh, gematria of that number is 9. So you add 36, 3 and 6 equals 9. Um, and no matter how many ways you calculate the number of the beast, you're going to come to nine. Okay, so we'll do it several different ways. For instance, six plus six plus six is 18. Eight plus one is nine, so you have nine again. Eight, uh, you have six times six times six, which is the what he was talking about there. You get the number 216. And guess what? Two plus one <laughs> plus six equals nine. Uh, then if you calculate it the way it's written, 600, three score, and six, which is 300, 60 and 6. You multiply 600 times 60 times 6, you get 216,000. Simple gematria, 2 plus 1 plus 9, or 2 plus 1 plus 6 equals 9. So these numbers reveal themselves also um, in geometry in many ways. So the Free Freemasons, for instance, are a perfect example of groups hiding messages in geometry. And 666 reveals itself very interestingly in geometry, and I think you guys will agree. Um, you have, so for instance, 666 represents a double triangle, triangulation. So it has two triangles within the triangle, and it equals to 666. It's one of the largest sums of those numbers that you can do in triangular form. Um, also, you have the hexagram which is represented in this star right here as six 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 and you can also do other calculations within this triangle to equal six 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 and, I, and i'm sorry these two triangles this, this hexagram that equals six 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 now everyone who is well researched in this symbol knows without a shadow of the doubt that this is not what we call the Star of David. Now, it's been said to be called that, but there's no text that you can point back to that shows that David had a star that he wanted people to wear, he wanted people to pass around or to worship, but this is what we have. Now, this star is almost closely resembling the Star of Solomon that we've talked about uh, before as well. And David, you did a, a really good show that I don't think a lot of people got to see. And if you haven't, I definitely suggest you look back at it. But it's about the 72 names of Solomon. Now, interestingly enough, 72 is also a number associated with this too, because 7 plus 2 is 9. So 72 has a huge role in this as well. So David, tell us a little bit about that show and how that ties in, because Solomon has so many things that uh, you would almost think that Solomon might be this number of this man, this Antichrist type figure. Yeah. Um, in that broadcast, I, I think we called it the six names of Solomon, I believe. Yes. I, I'm not, I think. But anyway, oh, six names. Okay. There are um, 
with Solomon, and I mean, Satan has to get a great thrill when people that profess to know Christ, they hang that six-pointed star around their neck and put it on their Bibles. It's not just wrong, it's evil. It's, it's, in, it's tied in with deep and ancient evil. It's tied in with the black arts. And we unpacked a lot of that uh, for you. There's no symbol that is more directly connected with Satan and the mark of the beast than that, that hexagram. And, and here you see, when we're talking about the, the numerics of it, that's going to point it back to you. You could study it from the history of it. You can study it from the occult text. And when you study it, from the numbers, it points you back to the same thing. Everything is pointing you to that this is evil, stay away from it. And that number 72, it's a very important number uh, in Scripture. And, of course, Satan is the imitator. Everything in the Word of God, he'll pervert it and he'll imitate it. And in Genesis chapter 46, we'll begin in verse 26, and it says, All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's son's wives, all the souls were threescore and six, and the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt, were threescore and ten. Seventy, and the two sons of uh, Joseph, make 72. Uh, many believe that there were 70 nations in the table of nations in Genesis chapter 10. You add Israel and the counterfeit uh, kingdom of Satan, and you've got 72 again. You can look. Uh, this is huge in the, in, in the Grimoires and in the, the, uh, the summoning ritual books, there are 72 devils. Uh, in the Golden Dawn literature, there are 72 devils that you summon. On and on and on. You go to the uh, capital and you look up. What do you got? You got 72 stars there and 72 pagan gods promoted. This is a huge thing, and it's, uh, it's a big number. And, y and you can see all these things through researching it, through uh, symbolism and scripture and seeing the satanic imitations. But also, when you begin to count, you know, and you look at it in numbers, well, here we are again, you know, we're right back to the same thing. And after a while, it's kind of hard to deny that we've got something. And, and the thing about it, the people on the dark side, they got this figured out. They know what this means. And it's time for us uh, to be wise as the serpent and harmless as the dove and see what's we got going on here. Because they're they got a plan. And they're headed towards something. It's nothing less than the extermination of the human race and repu uh, replacing it with their uh, altered AI man 2.0. I mean, that's exactly what they're up to. Yeah, and that, that kind of brings me to my next point here, uh, my next next slide here, and this is about the this being the number of a man. Now, the carbon atom uh, is related to this because it has six electrons, six protons, and six new neutrons. Now, 666 being the number of a man can be interpreted two different ways. It could be talking about one particular man, or it could be talking about it is the number of a man. This is the number of a man. This is what it is. Just like if I were to say, this number is the number of pigs. This number is the number of a dog. This could be interpreted that way as well. So we have these two different ideas. And this this idea is just something that really popped in my head, and you'll find out why here in a minute. And humans are made from 18% carbon, which is interesting because you have that 8 plus 1 equals 9. Uh, this is basically the structure of, of, huma of a human, your bones, your, your structure, the things that make up your physicality of your body all derive uh, from carbon when it comes to your structure of your body. Um, the carbon, I believe, is a similitude of the clay that was used by our Creator to create what we are by using carbon, which is basically clay, earth, to create us to be who we are today. 
And so the number 666 could, in fact, represent humanity as a whole. Now, we know that the number 6 in the Bible, the 6 was the day of creation. This was the day that he created mankind. Uh, we know that 6 also has to do with physicality because this is when he physically was done creating the physical part of our universe. Uh, so we have this physicality associated with it. And um, the, this, to me, is really interesting. I did a show that we can't talk about some of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight right here on YouTube, uh, but I did a show about graphene and uh, some of the properties of that and how this actually kind of manipulates um, who we are and graphene being, you know, the idea of that graphene and the carbon makeup. And I can't really talk about that a lot here on YouTube, but we are going to go over to Rumble and do a Q&A after this where we can kind of discuss a little bit more openly uh, what we want to talk about over there. Um, but ne reading this next verse, this is what got me on to what we're going to be ultimately discussing over on Rumble. Uh, this next verse right here, David, I'd like for you to read that if you wouldn't mind. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So interestingly, one of the, th the key verses in this that is very interesting to me, and I have it highlighted here, and it says, He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now, previously in the verse, it says this beast that came up out of the ground caused people to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, but then it caused them to create an image of this beast. Now, what we're talking about here is an automaton, an image of some sort that this person, this beast, is able to give life unto, literal life, able to give life and the power to speak. Um, this right here is mind-blowing to me because when I hear this, which I never heard this before, I never really even noticed that part that much before, I think AI. I think who is developing things to cause a machine or a image to have a life and to be able to speak. This is what we're talking about here, the singularity, this idea of AI being able to think for itself. Now, I don't know exactly what the image of the beast will look like. I know that, you know, we have a shadow of this with the image of the Son of God being being the image of God, right? He is the image, the thing that we can see about this system, which leads me to believe that the beast may not be able to be seen. The beast may be something very interesting. So this caused me to look a little bit further down the line to see if anything like this has ever been done before. Now, this is an interesting piece right here. Uh, this is a creature that was created for the island of Crete. And this is a huge automaton. This is a huge robot, massive robot, that would, according to legend, throw rocks at ships that came trying to invade. And it would patrol for three three mile radius of this island. It would patrol this island. It did it acted on its behalf. Now, how they said that this thing got its power was from the lumin luminiferous ether, ether. So it got this power from the ether, right? And so this is interesting because. This will play huge in in all of this discussion. But we have the Freemasons, David, who talk about this. They call it the seething energies of Lucifer. And they talk about if a person can be able to grab those energies and use them, then they can become perfect. They can do everything. They can do any kind of wonder that is able to be done. And we see... People like Tesla, which Tesla is interesting because the calculation of those numbers that we have together of that Timothy was talking about, which is, I believe, 216, is also, if you calculate the gematria of that number, guess whose name pops up? Tesla. Tesla's name pops up. Whoa. Um, it's very interesting. But you have this um, Tesla who his whole goal was to capture this energy that he called the prana which is a vedic terms text for the seething energies of lucifer for the the ether for um the vril whatever whatever language you want to go by but this is what he was trying to harness 
And so I believe that in the air, we have the prince, the power of the air, literally within the air, and his intelligence resides in the air, which is why there's such a drive to be able to pull things from the universe, from the universe to be able to give power, to be able to give Wi-Fi, to be able to give the ability to move things. There's all of these different things that this technology has to offer, and there are a race of people trying to be able to get this. Now, when you mix the idea of this with the quantum computer, now the quantum computer is an interesting thing. I was looking at this for a while back in a subject. Now, the quantum, the chip that they use, the processor that they use is really hard to describe how it works. But basically, uh, to describe how it works, but even by the people that make them, they don't quite fully understand how 100% that it works, which leads me to believe that this is not a technology we probably invented. But this is able to pull information. It's also able to, if you took it and you, you gave it a piece of information, it would be able to bounce all scenario, possible scenarios off of it and come back with the most probable scenario that would happen. So it's almost able to tell the future. Now, we have somebody like Elon Musk who owns a uh, company like Tesla who has warned very deeply about the dangers of AI, very warned and said this is probably too late. Yet he is at the forefront of AI, the forefront of robots, and it looks like if anybody can pull it off, this man can pull it off. And we'll talk more about that as time goes on. But you have this constant secret that's been passed down through myth mythology, secret schools, that there's this understanding that needs to be attained. Now, in Daniel, it's interesting. It talks about this king that will have the power for dark sentences. And the word is like Kedar. The only other time this word Kedar is used is when uh, Queen of Sheba came to Solomon and asked him hard questions is what the King James says. Well, that word is Kedar, the same word used in this king who mm. understands dark sentences. Mm. Now, could Elon be the one who understands dark sentences and is able to make a image have life mm -hmm. and speak? Not 100% sure, but I can tell you that it's enough to make you think. And we're AI is something that people, I don't think, realize how significant this is and the significance of people being able to use this. Um, David, do you have anything to add? We're going to talk. I was going to talk a little oh, bit about Oh, boy, that about two hours worth. I'm going to okay. hold most of my thoughts <laughs> for later. But the, the this is just so deeply fascinating to me that 3rd century B.C., that people claimed there was a giant robot. Now, a lot of people just dismiss this out of hand. You read in the Vedas uh, that they're the, what was the name that started with a V, the Varanas, they're flying machines. Vermont, and, Vermonas or Vermonas, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And they, and they believed uh, in the, um, the, the ancient uh, Vedic text of tapping in, they called it the Prana, I believe. Uh, yep. This is something that the Nazis were going after. The Nazis called it the Vril. Yep. And this goes along with Tesla's concept of an electric universe. Yep. That electricity was that power that was regulating the universe. And he believed also in the concept of the Aether. Yep. Tesla called it the Aether, the same yep. thing. And it, it is... Uh, it, it's just amazing. And then we have Einstein. And Einstein flips everything. And in all of Einstein's theories, he totally eliminated any reference to anything electric. Mm -hmm. And I think, for my opinion, for whatever it's worth, I think the work of Einstein is covering up the truth that the people that know don't want people to see. The aether, the vril, the prana, call it what you will. That is the supernatural power that the people that understand dark sentences are going to use to try to throw mankind into mankind 2.0. So true. And, you know, going back to this idea of the, the, the carbon, right, the, the, the makeup of human carbon, it's really interesting to think about this because we have Solomon who built a temple, 666 talents of gold, built this temple in these dimensions that are interesting, interesting and can equate to the numbers we're talking about here through his dimensions of his temple 
We have a second temple that was built, built. And then we have a third temple that is going to be erected, possibly. Or we have the idea that the temple that we have as a body is this other temple. Now, if this is a number of man, how crazy is it to think that there will come a time to where it will be hard to tell the difference between an AI and a human? We're already experiencing yeah. some of that right now. There is an actual Instagram model, David, that goes by Michaela on Instagram that has millions of followers. Michaela is not real. She operates underneath AI. Her, her account was hacked, and she makes millions of dollars uh, with advertising, wearing the clothes of different companies, but it's all a generated image. It looks like a young girl with other model friends, but it's not, right? And so we have this idea that we could be operating with AI and not have any idea that we're operating with AI. So what if the number of man is not just a way to buy and sell, but also a marker that you are in fact a man uh, that gets to a point to where AI makes too much money, AI takes over too much, they do do so much because, I mean, they literally have the information of all humanity within them. Every bit, not just, we can, you're smart, David, you're very smart, but this AI knows everything you know, plus everything that everybody else knows <laughs> at the same time, right? So the ability for these AI to accumulate large funds and to really take over the system is, is really there. So having a mark that identifies man, maybe like just like uh, Alberino was saying, the last seed of mankind before the end of the age, this is the last of the real man. This is the last of the men that are here. Now, that doesn't mean we should run out and go get this mark, but this means that there's a possibility with an integration into AI through this. There's a possibility of this marking humanity so that people know who you are, know you're a human, uh, know that they're not dealing with an AI. And this is a way that you can buy, sell, trade, a way to upgrade yourself genetically. All of these different things can tie into this mark that people have to receive. Now, there's a lot of people that come before us with many different theories. The WWW, which equates to 666, which is very yeah. real. Yeah. Uh, if you think about it, this has been the perfect intelligence gathering operation of the Internet. Oh, yeah. uh, from the, the moment it started, every all of the input that we've given this system has fed it intelligence. And this now this intelligence is coming to a culmination to where almost all intelligence that's ever been written about, you can find online. There's very few things that you can't find online anymore. So it has been building itself up for many years. Now we also have the people with the barcode, how the bar represents 666, a very real thing. So you mix all those things together. You mix the idea of the barcode. You mix the idea of the internet. You mix the idea of having a microchip that you can buy, sell, and trade. And you mix the idea of a number of a man. And you have a very interesting concept here with the cities that they're trying to do right now where you, you can only you only have to go 15 minutes or so to get from place to place. Yeah, This inaction would be perfect for that. Yeah. I remember way back in um, the 80s, there was a lady in Alabama, Mary Stewart Rife, and she's the one that figured out that the barcode had 666 in it. Wow. And, of course, this is how uh, – they track what's sold. Yeah. You know, and well, that wasn't the mark of the beast per se, but it's part of it. Yes. it it's a, it, this has been a multi leveled operation that been building for, for a long time. And it, it's hard to deny. And in the 14th verse, of revelation 13, it says that the false prophet moves people that they should build an image to the beast. Yeah. And, it could be being built right now in these many aspects like man that michaela thing man that's scary that's scary they're we're they're building it and this very well could be uh, well and it's hard to deny that it it's just in your face that this is indeed a part of it i mean when you meditate on the scripture in the light this is something people in former ages could not have known but when you meditate on that text in Revelation 13 and the light of what we know, you you go you got to wind up right here at AI. Yeah. Yeah. You got to wind up here. You do. You do have to wind up here. And you know, another interesting side to all of this that I that I didn't really discuss tonight. But the Aquarius symbol is that of Zebulun, 
Now Zebulun is the man that we see on the on the on the wings that it was to are on the faces of the thing. Zebulun is one of that. Now a lot of people believe we're going to the age of Aquarius, the age of the water bearer, the age of Zebulun. Now Zebulun had a child and and just just guess what his name was. Elon. <laughs> oh no. He had, he had a no, son no, named no. Elon. He has some oh, name Elon. No. Interesting enough too is Zebulon. No, my goodness. Zebulon is the sixth son of Jacob. Oh. So the numbers equal there in six. It's really interesting. There's so much to do with that. I don't know oh, yeah. what all of it means, but it's well, there. Is it all just coincidence? And, you know, it all comes back to number nine. Yeah. And Revelation chapter nine is where the abyss is open and chimeras come out. Right. Part human, part animal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, an, it's, an, it's, I don't think it's a coincidence. Whoa. At all. My goodness. I mean, after a while, uh, you know, the Lord is revealing things that are very, very, very important. I mean, they're very, very important. And I know that he that hath ears to hear is going to hear what the Spirit is saying of the churches. This is this is very important. I agree. And, and with that being said, there's more we'd love to discuss. And I think we're going to discuss a little bit more of it over on Rumble and do a few questions for you guys for about 30 minutes over there. Um, we'll start there at about 11. It's 1051 right now and go for 30 minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. We are uncensored on Rumble which we greatly appreciate, by the way. Um, and we're able to discuss things that we can't discuss here because there's more. Trust me, there's more. There's a big agenda that took place that you guys may or may not remember for the last few years that had a lot to do with what we're talking about tonight, and we just can't discuss it here on YouTube, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to move over to Rumble. The link is in the description for the Rumble Q&A. Uh, so make sure you guys join us over there. We we. We're so thankful for all of you guys that enjoyed the show, looked and watched the show and thought about it, and that we'll pass some of this information on to those who need to hear it. We're coming upon an age where children have never heard about these things. They don't understand these things, and AI is going to be a very major part of their life. If it isn't already, we've seen some of the stuff that AI is doing. We've seen that a lot of the work that's been put out over the last few weeks has been AI-related. Now, think about this. AI... Eventually, he's going to, every sermon, this about from every pastor, AI, write me up a sermon, boom, sermon. Uh, every textbook, boom, AI, write me up a textbook, you know, or take this textbook and rewrite it for me in a way you can't tell it's plagiarized, boom, take this. AI, uh, write a code for this computer program. AI, wrote a code for this. AI is going to be doing everything. And so the only teacher out there eventually is going to be AI, is creating weaker humans, stupider humans, all of these different things. And this is, I'm not trying to relate pigs to humans, but it's interesting. Pigs, when they're domesticated, they have no tusks. They have no hair. They have none of these different things, the boars. You put them out in the wild for uh, a few years, they'll come back with big, long tusks, big, long hair, and be much stronger and, and healthier and bigger than what they were before. Now, humanity has come to that place of domestication to a point to where I don't believe that we are near as smart as the original humans near as physically dominant as the original humans and definitely not mentally as strong as the original humans because yeah. of the domestication process that we've gone through. This is just another step in that equation to a point to where we're going to be looking at something that is very similar to the matrix. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's easy for me to believe the more I study and look that the, the people in third century BC with this uh, Taon robot or even older than that with the um, these flying machines in the, the Vedic text that people back then were more smart. The more old books you read, those old books, I mean, they're huge. Yeah, They're huge. Yeah. I mean, they wrote books. Today, people, if they go through a 200-page a book with large print, they think they've done something. Yeah, You know, mankind is getting more stupid and AI is getting smarter. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to deny that. There's yeah. not a whole lot of points you can make to say, say yeah. otherwise. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate each and every one of you so very much, so much more than you know. Uh, this is a blessing to us. We are just normal people out here doing what we can do, but you guys really um, encourage us and you support us to a point to where it's just amazing. And so we'd love to thank you guys for that. And we also like to do the Pounder's Pound where we hit the thumbs up button all together. And, David, if you got anything else to say before that, go for it. I'm just saying come on over and rumble with us. Uh, come on over. It's I love it. And uh, come on over. 
and uh, let's do the pound. Let's do it. One, two, two three. three. Boom. Boom. We got it. Pounded together with us the like button. Let's see what we can do. Thank you guys so stinking much, man. So much. Um, and we'll see you guys over on Rumble. And we'll see you guys again next week, which is going to be another exciting show. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up.